Uh, hi, uh, hi everyone. Um, uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the ISS Virtual Learning. Um, to this, this session is about uh, on how I actually basically uh, create a thermal camera using uh, Raspberry Pi uh, with uh, along with uh, using the Python programming. Um, back um, very early, uh, the first quarter of this year, uh, we were actually. Uh, uh, basically, security guards are actually, or those uh, premises uh, personnel were, were actually uh, reading temperatures uh, manually. So then I was, I was, I was going to, I was still going to clients' places and uh, uh, registered as the using their visitor management system. And I found out that uh, there is actually a problem there where uh, there's people need to queue up and take. They basically need to take temperature. So then uh, on on that. Early January, I basically went home and tried to uh, uh, draft out or draw a prototype, uh, see how can I, um, in fact, create a, a low-cost uh, device uh, back home. So um, the, the reason why I, 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 I do that, there's a few reasons. Um, big companies, uh, like even like ISS or NUS, they can actually purchase very expensive devices. But what if you're, if you're talking about restaurant, uh, uh, elderly homes, uh, those uh, hawker centers and stuff like that. They, they can't afford to buy all these devices, yeah? So then I was thinking that if, uh, if let's say, we can create a very low-cost one that can be installed on all these places, then uh, we can actually read or, or, or actually uh, take temperature of every individual. Um, I've been doing some research online. Uh, there's a lot of uh, expert uh, saying that uh, taking temperature cannot prevent um, COVID-19 from uh, spreading, which is true. It's just a precaution. This is a just a precaution measure. So then, uh, but then I, I, will, I still uh, I still persist on. Uh, in fact, uh, go on with creating this device. Okay. Uh, in fact, well, I want to know. I mean, I'm curious. I want to learn. I want to know how it's being done and stuff like that. So basically, um, upon this uh, session or this workshop, you will have the knowledge of knowing how the 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 device is being built. Uh, and uh, the hardware that the, the bill of materials that uh, is included in this prototype on this device uh, and understand how the temperature sensors data is being retrieved. And as you know that most of the device have your picture that is shown on in front and there is a thermal image that is being shown sometimes is overlapping or sometimes it's on the left side of the device. So I'll be generating a thermal image uh, from the uh, temperature values that is being picked up from the sensor. And lastly, I will detect the, the person that's standing in front is a human. So there's a face detection and the person that's wearing a mask is also detected. Uh, so that's why the, uh, the, in, the detection is actually uh, executed on the device itself. It's not on the cloud. Uh, so that's why there's some sort of uh, edge computing over, over this uh, demo. And uh, lastly, you can basically configure the temperature th threshold. If let's say uh, the, the room temperatures are, are not suitable for the default threshold, and um, there is actually a web application that is uh, hosted on the device itself. Uh, most of the device that is out there, uh, commercial ones that I've seen in NTUC or any other buildings, they basically have a, a screen, a, a LCD screen or LED screens. The screen basically will show your face and there's a thermal image and there's a few of uh, text uh, of, your, of your temperature reading and stuff like that. So what I'm in, in, if I incorporate the screen into the device, then my cost will go up. So what I try to do is basically uh, in order to balance between the H, uh, H computing unit and the the uh, the screen. I basically opt out the screen so that I can cut the I can cut down the cost. Uh, so so then without the screen, how do you know that you are basically taking a temperature? But, uh, what I did was I built a web application inside the device, and you can basically uh, scan a QR code on the device to basically launch the web application on your mobile phone. Uh, as you know that uh, I'm I'm quite I'm quite I'm quite bad in this actually. In ISS, we're supposed to take two twice tem uh, twice temperature reading a day. So then uh, every time when I use the, the, the handheld one that poke into your ear or the one that, that put into your mouth, right? So uh, you have to sanitize it or you have to clean it. Yeah, that, that is terrible. So then what I did was I used back this device to basically uh, take temperature and I can immediately screenshot on my mobile phone. So that as evidence, yeah? 
So then, uh, and, and when, if I'm having a fever, this, uh, this prototype also sends uh, sensor data to the cloud. So, so if let's say you're using this device on your premises and the person is having a fever and there's an investigation by the authority that he needs to know who is having, who is having the fever for that, that particular day and whatsoever. So the, when the sensor takes, uh, uh, reads uh, above 38, it will actually capture the person's image. Uh, it doesn't capture the IC number or the phone number, but the image. Uh -huh. So he, the authority had to figure out how to find this guy using, uh, yeah, uh, uh, some sort of database they have uh, on, uh, yeah. So then, okay. So why, like I said, why do I build my own uh, DIY thermal camera solution? I want to customize. I, I'm a I'm a tinkerer. So basically, I want to basically customize from the the toe to 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 head or whatsoever, and back and forth, back and forth. And uh, I want to make it low cost. Uh, and like I said, uh, I want to automate it. So, so today, if you use those thermo thermometer and those uh, uh, those device that reads from your ear and stuff like that, they doesn't send they doesn't send the data to the cloud or they doesn't send to your mobile phone, unless you you get something that is very uh, expensive or you know. So then, uh, I I and in fact with this customization, I can in fact uh, also integrate with the visitor management system of uh, the current uh, company. So, so I do believe that there is certain companies, they already have their existing visitor management system. For example, MAS. Uh, when I visit MAS, the, the person that I'm going to meet up with, he basically key in uh, the visitor's information into the system and I'll get, a, I'll get an SMS and stuff like that. Then they know who is coming for the meeting. So then, uh, so then you can actually tally back your visitor management system with the, the temperature reading as well. Um, and then, uh, of course, the, the, the other thing is actually contactless. Uh. So, so the, 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 the solution actually uh, also solve the contactless uh, one meter to seven meter range. So you don't need to basically hold a device to read someone's temperature. Unless, um, I will tell you a little bit of the drawback of this technology later on, on the, on the further slides. I have actually uh, go around supermarket. I saw some stuff that most of these devices didn't, didn't, didn't handle properly. So then, okay, don't worry. And then uh, it's strictly for human. There's no, uh, there's no object, there's no animals. You cannot bring a dog and then take a temperature. So sorry about that. The solution only strictly for a human. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and most of the parts of this device is actually ed educational. So they are not in the industry grade. Uh, uh, so that's, that's why it's low cost. Yeah, but it works. Lah, huh? So then um, what is required to build this prototype? So it costs $270. Sing dollar. Uh, GovTech actually... Uh, from one thousand dollar, if if some of you have read the newspaper, GovTech was able to bring down the cost from a thousand dollar device to two thousand dollars in the newspaper. Uh, the reason why my device is slightly expensive than the GovTech is because there's a TPU inside, there's an artificial intelligent edge computing inside, so it's seven seventy dollars more than GovTech. So the items that is supposed to, uh, supposed to be uh, uh, purchased uh, 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 from different uh, e-commerce or online shops and to basically form as a bill of material is that you need a, a, a miniature computer, which is a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it can be a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4, it's up to you. And you need to purchase a micro SD card to install the operating system. Then there's uh, other fruit sensors that that's the main thing that where they, they, they actually used to read the uh, temperature of a, of, a, of a distance of a, of a person standing in front. And then there is a Google uh, Coral TPU Edge processor to do the uh, inference of the face and the face mask. Yeah. So this is the this is a seven additional seventy dollars that that bump up the, the the device cost. If I if I replace the TPU with a LCD screen, uh, likely I the, the device will cost around two twenty sing dollar. Okay. So then um, I have a I have a camera eight megapixel camera. And I have a RGB addressable LED stick so that when a person, in fact, is okay, it will actually blink as uh, green. If uh, the person is having fever, the device will indicate and blink as red. And uh, a few jumper cables here and there. And I, I in fact, design a 3D printing enclosure. Yeah. So, uh, so that I can house all these uh, uh, bare metal uh, devices into the enclosure. So first of all, the in order to wire uh, the thermal cameras to to a Raspberry Pi, you have to actually go through the uh, the I two C bus. Yeah. So this is quite straightforward. It's basically four jumper cables that you basically wire over, and subsequently you figure out how to you house the 
the components that are supposed to, to basically read the, this is the sensors that read the temperature values from your, the human uh, body, uh, your human forehead and subsequently send it to the, to the miniature computer. Okay. Okay. So then uh, you need a Pi camera. The Pi camera will basically use as an input to, to, to capture the human's uh, face and subsequently send it to the TPU, which is for the detection of the face and the face mask. Yeah, the inference. Lah. Yeah. Okay. And you need to hook up RGB LED. So whenever there's a person standing in front having a fever or uh, he's not he's not uh, he's 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 not having a fever, the uh, device will blink uh, green and red. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, why why did I choose to stall uh, why do I choose to uh, detect face and face mask on the device itself. Uh, so, so traditionally, people actually move all this detection to the cloud, right? So then there is latency, there is slowness and stuff like that. I decided to actually move, move it to the device. So the, when you move it to the device, then the topic that they're calling on the industry now is called edge computing. So edge computing is nothing but just having your AI models that is being installed on the, on the computer, hooked up with the processor, the TPU processor, and then in fear. Yeah. So the two things that I infer is or detect is basically the face of a person, and the second thing is actually the person wearing a mask. Yeah. So it's very fast. It's super fast. And the models that I actually train and, and compile is basically uh, uh, is is mainly for TensorFlow like, and and is a eight bit uh, uh, full quantization of uh, of a model. So uh, it, I did a benchmark. So if I basically run the model. On uh, on a TensorFlow, uh, non TensorFlow like the inference actually is slower. So the inference of of uh, using the TensorFlow like is basically faster on 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 the edge device. So if you look at this diagram over here, right? If the inference is done on the cloud computing, basically you need to send an image of the person to the AWS Azure or Google Cloud, and then uh, most of your models are actually installed or or set up on the cloud servers and. And once they infer or once they detect the images, uh, the images that is being sent by the, to the from the device to the cloud, they have to respond back to the device. Yeah, but if you imagine that all the models are actually installed on the Raspberry Pi with hook up with the TPU, the inference are real time, near to uh, is real near to real time. So the device detect, yeah, you are wearing a mask, you are human, you are not an animal, yeah, you are not an object, yeah. So uh, the the key thing to the to the detection is basically this little device that is hooked up to the Raspberry Pi uh, via the uh, USB uh, USB three uh, port, and then uh, it's not expensive. It's actually around uh, sixty bucks to seventy uh, uh, bucks like that. Yeah, and then uh, it basically runs. A, a, you need to install and set up TensorFlow uh, like on this uh, on this Raspberry Pi. So then uh, let's talk about the data structure of the sensors. Eh? So uh, it's actually eight times eight. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a grid of eight times eight. So it, then eight times eight consists of 64 uh, data, uh, data, data values or temperature values. So, so imagine that you're standing in front of the sensors, right? The sensors basically uh, box out in your face. And then when you get nearer to, to the screen, uh, when it box out your face, that is actually uh, boxes of grid that actually reads the temperature. If let's say my cheek is, is basically lower temperature, so my forehead is higher temperature. So that's where the, the readings are taking, taking place. So all this, all this data is actually basically, uh, in fact, uh, sent from the sensor, uh, read from the sensor and sent to the Raspberry Pi. And then, uh, of course, there's a room temperature, right? Then the program needs to have some tolerance and tweaking in order to, to, make, it, to make sure it's, 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 it does make sense. So some some product some commercial product you go out you when you go out and uh, evaluate right you basically need to ask them what is your tolerance value yeah what's your tolerance value so if they say uh, there's no tolerance value that likely the vendor is smoking you yeah they are they are, they are sort of uh, you know they, they don't know their product very well so so because there's a room temperature though and then indoor with aircon and outdoor with aircon needs to be tweaked as well uh. you just need to know that okay so then uh, come to design I. I, in fact, 
was thinking that this 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 device, this IoT device or this prototype should be mounted on my door. So so likewise is uh, I also use it back for my own own use, right? So if visitor comes into my house, I basically ask them to look into this this wife for taking temperature as well. So if you look at it, it's like um, uh, I I'll talk about it later on where this device is actually an inter uh, in interim solution. Yeah, I'll talk about that later. So I went on uh, designing this device enclosure uh, using Autodesk. Yeah, I, I basically moved between Fusion 360 and uh, the Tinkercad. So you, you can be, if, you can, if you look on the right-hand side corner where there's a three pieces, uh, this, this enclosure basically uh, uh, break into three pieces. One is the base plate and the other one is a cover. And the top one is basically to mount the the sensors and the Pi camera, okay? Yeah, so, so I, I, why, why do I design that way? There's a reason behind, uh, especially the front panel. Uh, front panel. I, I know that uh, the sensors might be obsolete or the sensors might go uh, end of life so that I can swap out or redesign the, the, the front panel to basically have uh, extension and different sensors being plugged into it. So the overall, the overall architecture and the overall software architecture, the hardware and the software, what I, if, you, if you put it together, is basically a web application that is hosted on a device and then uh, store the persons that are having uh, uh, fever or uh, yeah, only fever uh, to the uh, Firebase database, the, the NoSQL database. And subsequently, uh, the, the, there's a few three programs in there, uh, four programs basically, four Python programs in there that communicate between each other to perform the, uh, the justification of this person, whether he's having a high fever or not high fever, that's all. Okay. Okay, so uh, the four programs is, uh, the first program is basically reading uh, sensor, uh, oh, sorry. It's a bit laggy though. Okay, so the first program is basically reading uh, temperature that values from the sensors. And there's a bit of tuning and tweaking needs to be done due to room temperature. And then um, build up the heat map data structure and generate the thermal image. And uh, lastly, uh, if let's say the person is having fever, I will store it to the cloud database. This is the first Python program. And the second Python program is, is basically a web uh, API. Uh, the API, basically what it does is it renders the, the front page and it does the uh, posting of the temperature configuration and getting the temperature images that renders on the HTML page. So it's actually a motion uh, JPEG image. And the third program is, uh, is actually a, a blinking program, I call it a blink fever Python program. So what it does, it, it just detects whoever is standing in front of the device, uh, if he or she is actually having a fever. If let's say he, he, he or she has having a fever, then the, this program will basically blink red. If not, then uh, the person is not having a fever, then the program will just blink green. And he, he or she can actually enter the building or whatsoever, the room or... Yeah. So then the last program is a bit heavy. Uh, it's actually an uh, artificial intelligence uh, program. It detects the face and it detects the mask. Uh, the person is wearing a mask. Uh, like I said, uh, it captures the face from the Pi camera and then it loads the face detection model uh, that is taken from uh, a library that uh, starts to detect and it sends to the TPU for inference. And lastly, there's another section of the program that detects the person is wearing a mask. And, and the, the, the mass detection is actually a classifier. It's just a classification. It's a supervised learning. And then uh, once I detect the person is standing in front and I will box the human face uh, and I will sort of uh, write, it, uh, write a value to uh, some sort of uh, flat file or things like that to, to, to indicate whether he's actually a human. If he's not a human or if he's a, he's a dog or he's a cat or he's an object, then uh, there's an indicator uh, that is reverse of the human presence. Okay. Okay. Um, I've been doing this since January. So there is actually three versions of the app. Uh, the version one looks like something like that. There is a thermal image on the left, and there is uh, that, that version one doesn't have artificial intelligence built in. Version one, what I, what I focused on was actually basically reading. Uh, streaming the thermal image and reading the, uh, the temperature from the sensor itself. 
And subsequently, uh, while you can configure the threshold of the temperature, uh, whether depending on the room, room, uh, room temperature or whether it's indoor or outdoor. Then the second version is 1.1. Uh, 1.1, I does a lot of fixes. Uh, basically, uh, the uh, human image wasn't that clear, and the uh, the it's a bit dark. Yeah, so then I try to uh, tweak the program and make sure that it is uh, brighter, so that that because my next phase is basically to capture the human face, right? So then the last version was able to box. Uh, if you look at the last version. It was able to box the human face, and subsequently, it will detect if the person is wearing a mask. I'll be showing you the demo on the video uh, how it works, so don't worry about that. Then, um, what's the pros and what from this uh, from this learning? Uh, what actually I learned uh, within the what is the strength and what's the weakness of this device? So let me go through with you the the pros and cons of uh, this device. Uh, as, as you know that this device is sort of uh, DIY, right? So, so DIY has the ability to extend. So you basically can add more, more, more module, uh, uh, electronic stuff in there to, to make it even better. And it's modular design. So you can replace, swap in and swap out and replace the, the electronic parts inside this device. And you do not need to basically download the application from the uh, Google Store or the Apple Store. Is based, the, the, the app is in fact hosted as a web application. You can just flash a QR code and then access the web application. And uh, I, I put it on the GitLab, so then it's considered open source. And you can basically uh, uh, DIY, um, follow through some instructions and, and uh, make this device yourself. Uh, and the API is basically a RESTful API, so you can you can retrieve temperatures, you can retrieve thermal images uh, through the uh, RESTful API uh, endpoints. And lastly, uh, is uh, the program that is hosted on the Raspberry Pi is is actually hooked to the GitLab, and subsequently you will able to update the the program is on the on the device itself. So you likely will write some sort of script that you can actually do a git pull of the Python codes. Uh, from your uh, repository. Yep. So that's that's how you achieve uh, over the air update. So th this this device is not those uh, microcontrollers, but it's actually just a mini computer. So you basically can uh, use whatever tools that is used for the source control instead of uh, doing a OTA like like those other micro microcontrollers because the OTA is quite complicated to do actually. Yeah. So then uh, the weakness of my device is heavy and bulky. So when I designed the enclosure, I want it to be rugged. So, so that's why it's, it's actually a bit heavy. The, the front enclosure was, uh, 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 was designed in the consideration that when it drops, uh, it doesn't break. So that's why it's, it's, it's solid and heavy and bulky. So likely you might want to uh, solve this uh, weakness uh, by reducing the, um, the, actually, uh, the, the, the thickness of the enclosure. And, uh, this device only allows uh, one person at a time. So if you have multiple persons standing in front of the device, uh, the, the, the reading won't take place. I mean, I mean, it can still detect the face, but the temperature sensors will go haywire. Yeah. So that, that, that's my testing. And this device has a heat issue. So uh, we, when I have a TPU installed, a wired with this device, uh, it generates a lot, a lot of heat. Yeah, even the Raspberry Pi, I have to put heat sink on it so that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't heat up so fast. So then, with the Raspberry Pi four and the TPU uh, alongside on inside the enclosure, it generates damn a lot of heat. So it's unbearable. So uh, where later on I will show to you uh, how do I solve the heat issues, but it's still uh, it's still a problem to the device. So and the device isn't waterproof. So you, if you're planning to put the device outdoor and it gets uh, drained with water or there's rain or someone spl splash the device, likely the device will kapoop, you know? <laughs> so it's not waterproof, yeah? So uh, then there is no monitoring of, uh, on this device. So if this device goes down or this device has a uh, faulty parts inside, uh, there is no software that monitors these multiple devices. So if let's say you're installing multiple places, then this device doesn't have a built-in monitoring uh, uh, modules that to monitor it. And this device is basically lacking of security because I didn't put security in consideration. What I, what I actually mainly focused was actually get it working first. 
So I, uh, the security wasn't put in place. So I can tell you what are the loopholes that are uh, uh, in this device that, that yeah, doesn't comply to cybersecurity. And then this device has also a limitation of the lighting. So if let's say there's a very bright sunlight shines to this device, it won't detect anything. Basically the face, the temperature reading or all this. Uh, I think the, the commercial product also facing this issue. That's why if you go to NTUC, right, um, uh, those 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 device those commercial products that you see on the on the on the on the on the supermarket or on those premises, you ask them to put under the sunlight, right? It won't work. Yeah. So then there's one more use case that actually I I basically uh, encounter when I was visiting the uh, uh, Singsiong supermarket is uh, a Malay lady wearing a tudong, right? They cannot detect. Yeah. So that is one use case that they never they never test out. So that is because the inference of the model never do properly. So if so, there's a few things I also realized. I bought a mask that have a cartoonish um, mouth in front, also failed. The detection also failed. So it has to be blue and black or white. It have to plain, be a plain color. So tudong is one thing I was very surprised. So the Malay lady has to use back the the forehead one and the ear to to get into the Sinsiao supermarket. So this is one, one thing that uh, a lot of people that are rushing to, de to develop this prototype and uh, this, this device and roll it out, it, like, like I said, this is actually an interim solution. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, I extracted a few phrases on the, on the internet. So there's people saying that you cannot expect fever symptom screening to be kind of the foolproof of measure of COVID-19, which, which is true. This is just a Pre precaution measure, that's it. People felt better if they see it happening, but it's actually a false sense of security. It's something that we should not be doing, but yet we are doing in, because we need to comply. Yeah. So, so like I said, um, this is not a foolproof thing. And lastly, in order to basically conclude this, these slides here, uh, what I think of is this device, when I actually went through since the very early of this, uh, this uh, year, I, I realized that the best, the best vital science device is basically our mobile phone. So in the future, likely you will actually see your mobile phone having temperature sensors, uh, oximeters, and many, many more things. So that is the best device. So all this device that currently the market actually selling to you is uh, in fact an uh, interim solution. It's, it's basically a mobile phone, yeah. So the, the mobile makers will put in all these sensors inside. Eventually, we will be taking uh, temperature by flashing your, your, your mobile phone in front of your forehead and then you send automatically to your, to your app or to whatever API. Yeah. Okay. So I'll be uh, actually going through a demo with you uh, uh, on this. Yeah. Uh, I will be switching to a, a laptop. So, yeah. So I'll be playing uh, a few videos. Uh, hold on for that. Yeah, I hope you can hear the sound. Uh, you can, they can hear the sound, right? Can I? okay. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, let me play. It, there's sound, right? No, huh? There's no sound, huh? Is there sound? No, huh? Okay. So then, no sound. No sound. All right. So if, okay, so so sorry. If Let's say there's no sound. What, I, what I'm going to do is, basically, I will just uh, say out, yeah. Uh, so this is the enclosure. Uh, the enclosure basically enclosed all the all the electronic parts inside. Uh, there is an opening on uh, as highlighted. Yeah. So the RGB uh, LED sticks is actually installed installed behind this enclosure. Uh, this is actually the LED sticks that actually does the green and blue blinking, and um, and there is a temperature sensors that is sitting on the panel, uh, where the uh, temperature sensor is the AMG eight eight three three. Yeah, yeah. This is this is basically mounted with uh, uh, 
four M2 2.5 screws that is wired to the uh, uh, Pi, Pi computer, the Pi, Raspberry Pi. And then right beside the thermal camera, there's actually a Pi 8 megapixel camera that is used to infer the face and the mask. Yeah. So the input of the image that is captured by this uh, Pi camera will be sent to the Raspberry Pi uh, computer. And that's where the, it, the communication of the TPU will take place. Okay. So yeah, hold on for that. So it's transition. So let's open up the case. Uh, inside, basically uh, on top, there is a Raspberry Pi uh, here. Yeah. So the, the Raspberry Pi is being hooked up with jumper cables and also uh, hooked to the TPU, which is the uh, AI TPU processor. And uh, basic, basically is uh, I2C cables and the, the voltage five volt and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's how it's being hooked. And subsequently, uh, the video is a bit slow, so don't uh, bear, bear with me. So I, okay. So then below is basically the TPU, the Google TPU uh, that is used for the AI inference. And let me move forward a bit. Mm, yeah. Okay, so then there's RGB stick that is being uh, glued on the side of the of the of the of the close enclosure, and that is to indicate whether the person is having fever. And let me forward a bit. Okay, so then there is the sensors and the the Pi cameras that is side by side, uh, side by side being uh, mounted, and of course it's being hot glue lah, so to make sure that it doesn't drop out. Okay, so then uh, how do we power this device? Is uh, okay, let's let's look at this video here. Uh, basically, there is a heat. Uh, there's a heat uh, uh, fin over here. So there is a, a heat fin that is designed where because the, the 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 temperature is quite high inside this area. So that's why the uh, the heat fin is is being uh, designed in, in this this uh, this side so that the heat can actually flow down. And subsequently, uh, this device is powered by. Uh, an adapter, a UK adapter that is actually 5 volt with uh, 3 ampere. So then you need to basically hook this cable into an outlet. So there's an outlet here. There's the opening here. So the cable will be, in fact, uh, being uh, slot in this side and then subsequently uh, go around this, this device here. Uh, make sure that it doesn't uh, land on top of this uh, TPU so that it, it won't uh, have uh, melt, sort of melt the insulation of the, of the cable. Okay, so that's okay. So basically, that's how it looks like. You you basically hook in here, and the the dimension is just nicer. So it's just on top, yeah. So then once you cover the device, that's the how the power so, uh, the power cables are being uh, put out, and and basically you can mount this uh, UK adapter into your uh, to your socket mount point. Okay. Okay. So then uh, behind the device, there's actually uh, 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 you you need to have uh, M3 screws to uh, basically uh, strengthen or uh, even close the enclosure. So you basically need to uh, provide a sort of M3 screws that you can actually strengthen it. So there's opening here. So what I was was trying to do here is uh, the 3D printers the support wasn't designed properly. So so that's why there's some uh, there's some problem here. But in fact, this is actually hollow. So that you can buy a 3M hang hang sort of sort of thing that you can basically hang on your wall, so that that it, you don't need to glue or double sided tape to your wall. So you can basically get two hooks and then basically hang the device. Okay. So that's it for this. I will move on to the next video. Okay. So the device uh, looks like this. Yeah, the, 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 the prototype looks like this. So when a person is standing in front, so you can't see me, but I'm standing in front, uh, it will blink green uh, when this uh, thermal sensor cameras uh, start to. So uh, in order for me to simulate the person is having a fever, I use a lighter to light it up. So the degree will go high. So when the degree goes high, then uh, the device will blink red. So there is a bit of lag. There's a lag there. Uh, that's, that's, that's for sure. So I can sort of tweak it, but once the lighter is being flashed in front of the, of the thermal cameras and then it will, it will actually bling, bling red. Okay. Okay. 
let me show you the app. Yeah, so basically uh, when you access the app, it's actually a web application, it's responsive. There is actually a thermal image on top and there is your, the human face uh, where that the, the, the camera, the Pi camera will stream the human face on uh, right below, yeah? So if I play this, uh, when the person is standing in front of the device and he, he or she doesn't have a camera, uh, fever that is 35.9, the reading is 35.9, then uh, the thermal image will, will not be uh, populated with a uh, heat map. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let me show to you the next video. When, when a person is having a fever, so I, I basically use a lighter to simulate and uh, in front of the device. Yeah, so then you will see heat map and the temperature start to, to increase. So 36, 39, 38, it goes up. So then uh, when, when it detects there's a, there's a fever, then uh, the person's face will be captured and the, 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 the value of the data will be sent to the, to the cloud. Okay. And then lastly, uh, the mass detection. Yeah. So this is, this is a bit laggy, but uh, yeah, you have to sort of, when I wear a mask, it say face mask detected. When I take off the mask, which is a bit laggy, huh? so the, the inference actually takes place faster than the actual streaming. Yeah, so when I, I remove my mask, then the face mask is not detected, okay? Right, so uh, let's not go further. I, I basically show you uh, uh, how I basically store the data. So on the, on the Firebase, uh, I'll basically store the data looks like this. So if a person is having, um, so there's actually four columns or four attributes. Uh, which device is this reading coming from? Um, is uh, which URL uh, does the, uh, where do you store the, the person's image? And what was his temperature during that date or that time? Yeah, so then uh, in order to flip over here, we actually store all the, all the person's image on the clock. So the device basically, when this fellow is having fever, then it will basically store the information into the clock. So um, basically we have around 30 minutes, I will be taking uh, Q and A, so I won't, I won't go further. Uh, if uh, most of you are basically interested on the, the things that I'm doing, uh, on my slides, there's actually uh, references here. Yeah, the, the reference link is on my slides. So you can basically visit my, my GitHub page and stuff like that. So uh, then I, the references on the GitHub page also have my, uh, my Jupyter Notebook, how I actually detect the face mask. Yeah, so, so it's, it's a very lengthy TensorFlow program that I have uh, actually wrote based on the classifier. So it's, it's basically uh, with mass and no mass. So if, if you guys are interested to know further, you can basically visit my GitHub. There's actually a consolidated data set that I consolidate with, with mass and no mass. So uh, if you want to basically contribute to this or to be part of this project, you can actually uh, yeah, join me. So, so I, I realized that there's a lot of data is not captured yet. So I try, I try my best to, to capture as much, uh, much data as possible from the internet and uh, also take my own photo lah, when I'm wearing a mask. Okay, so uh, I will jump into the Q&A now. Uh, so if you have any question, please post it on the q and I'll be answering your Q&A, okay? Okay, so, um, okay, there's a question say, can a fan help with the heat issue? Yes. So when, when, I install, um, when I install a fan, right, when I start to install a fan, then the enclosure needs to be, uh, in fact, uh, uh, changed. Yep. Then uh, how to turn this prototype in the industry level product? I, I think I don't know. Leh. Yeah, this one I don't know. Leh. Yeah, maybe you can fund my project. <laughs> yeah, so uh, does your prototype periodically check the GitHub for upgrades uh, is actually, yes. My, my Raspberry Pi will actually uh, check the, and let's say there's a push. So I basically configure a webhook on the GitLab. So when there is a commit or there's a push, uh, my Raspberry Pi will pick it up. So, but of course this is not very good like, because if let's say I'm pushing something, something that's buggy, then it will basically propagate to all the devices. So I'm, I'm, I'm still thinking how to do it the best way, okay? So then, uh, which Raspberry Pi version is best if the heat issue is a concern? Raspberry Pi 3 and below. 4 is definitely uh, problematic. Okay. Uh, what is the effective range of the thermal camera? It's 1 meter to 7 meter. It's actually 1 meter to 7 meter. 
according to the, the data sheets of the specification of the breakbox. Yeah. If let's say they 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 cheat us, uh, you know, then then we can't do much because a lot of components that are used on the from the game from China or whatever, there's a bit of a reduction of their materials, so they end up if they cheat us, then we might not achieve that distance. Okay. Uh, thank you for sharing. Great work. Can this work be replicated on Arduino and Pi Zero? Uh, Pi Zero, yes, but Arduino, no, because um, uh, unless you are in, basically uh, Arduino, you need to flash with MicroPython. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, there is a QR code behind. Uh, please uh, flash and give us a feedback. Uh, thanks.